Vince Tringali is a legend in the Bay Area, and someone should make a movie about him. He's football's version of Forrest Gump. Vince's film would not be a drama, but a documentary. Because when it comes to Tringali's life, truth is definitely stranger than fiction. Recently in San Francisco, a banquet was held at St. Ignatius High School. The man of the hour was a former football coach. Most of them haven't changed that much. His name is Vince Tringali. <laughs> it's the hair that throws you off. <laughs> and to say that he had an impact on his players' lives would be an understatement. Where is Elon? Elon, uh, he's been a monk for 30 years. I know. You I drove know. him into the... Uh, into, I, I drove him into, 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 into being Buddhist into, monk. He drove him into isolation for 30 years. During the 1960s, some of the most famous names in Bay Area high school football played either for or against Tringali's powerhouse St. Ignatius Wildcats. They were our big rivals. I went to a public high school. Vince Tringali was one of the true characters, really, in high school coaching ever in San Francisco. And I was a high school coach out there, too, so I, I knew Vince and, and the football clinics and all, but he was sort of the guru. He was sort of the high school football coach at that time. The thing you remember about Vince Tringali is energy. He was just oozing with personality. His biggest trait was to get the most out of you. He challenged you all the time. He'd say, Gil, is that as fast as you can run? He said, what? someone else get in there and show me how to run. He said, baloney, I'm gonna show you how to run. He made football fun, and he was a winner. He and we expected to win. That was just part of playing ball at SI and, and part of being on Vince Tringali's team. When you've had the opportunity to be around someone like Vince Tringali, it's something that you just don't forget. It made you feel like you could do anything that you wanted to do. Vince had passion to be a coach. You guys are successful because you have passion for what you do, and you go to work ready to put in a full day's work. That man taught us how to do that. I learned from you. Before he became their coach, Tringali was himself a member of one of the most famous college football teams of all time, the 1951 University of San Francisco Dons. In 1950, I went to USF at the end of spring practice. They cut me. And because I played the ukulele, I was a clown. My best friend went up to the coach and said, you can't cut him because he makes everybody happy. So I was left on the team as a clown. <laughs> At their off-site training camp in 1950, Tringali not only made everyone grin, he earned the last laugh. When we came back to San Francisco, the clown started. And I never left for two years. I played defense for two years. Of course, I had Gino Marchetti on my left, Bob St. Clair on my right. So I was pretty well covered. <laughs> Both Gino Marchetti and Bob St. Clair would end up in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, as would the team star, halfback Ollie Matson. A fourth Hall of Famer emerged from the Sports Information Office. Well, people, that was the SID. Apparently, Pete knew what we had. In fact, I think he rode the success of that team into what he became, and he became a great commissioner. Four NFL Hall of Famers off of one team. Unheard of. Though built of legends, what made the team legendary was a game they didn't play. In 1951, the Dons finished the regular season with a perfect 9-0 record. There was talk of an invitation to play Georgia Tech in the Orange Bowl, a game that would have national championship implications. The invitation came, but not everyone was included. It's uh, my understanding that they uh, invited us, but they said you have to leave the two black guys at home. <laughs> well, as soon as we heard that, we don't go, you know. Don't the stuff it really. We wouldn't have gone. We didn't want to sacrifice our integrity for glory. Nobody at the time thought it was a big deal because it's just the way we felt. Tringali graduated from USF and in 1959 was hired as a history teacher and football coach at St. Ignatius Prep. At clinics, he ran into other area coaches like Hillsdale High's Dick Vermeil. He would take notes. Whatever, whatever any coach said at, at the clinic, he would take notes and diagram it, et cetera, and he put them in a book and he'd sell them to you for three bucks. So you didn't have to sit there and take notes, you could listen. But in the interim, he's like a big computer, all 
all this information he's getting from all these top coaches all over the country. Hey, Bryant, this, that, what they do, how they do it, this drill, how we solve this problem, just absorbing it all. And I really think that's what had helped him immensely. Like Vermeil, Tringali was a sponge, absorbing his surroundings. In 1964, he spotted an opposing player named O.J. Simpson and set him on a path to the University of Southern California, where Tringali had ties to the coaching staff. He came running by my bench, and I said, I better call USC, because this kid's pretty quick. I called USC up, and they, I said, I got one. Now you always say this, and no, in this case, I do. But before Simpson could attend USC, he had to improve his grades at the City College of San Francisco. He was, he was flunking out, and they called me up and said, you gotta do something. I said, what can I do when he's flunking out? Who are the teachers? Well, one was an ex-teammate of mine. So I called him up. Hi, Larry. <laughs> I can't tell you what he said. It was nasty. I said, I'm just saying hello. He said, no, you're not. <laughs> well, we ended up in a room. And there was one teacher, OJ, myself, and a coach from USC, and he said, he didn't even come to class. He embarrassed us. But because of him, it points to yours truly, we're going to give you a break. Well, failing grades became passing grades. Keeping the juice eligible led to a national championship for the Trojans in 1967 and earned Tringali preferred status on the USC sidelines. I saw him play every, every game at USC. I went down every home game for McKay for 15 years almost. They won four championships, four national championships in those 15 years. I got one ring. That's the uh, national championship ring they gave me. That was a great 15 years. I was a white mouse sitting in the corner, watching greatness happen all around me. Still on his feet at midfield to the 45, 40. Simpson was the first of many Bay Area players Tringali would guide toward USC. Another was the quarterback at arch-rival Lincoln High, Mike Holmgren. When I was playing high school football, we played them on Thanksgiving Day a couple times, which was the championship game, and Vince was the coach, and I know he wanted to come break my legs. I'm sure he told those guys to kill me all the time. I tried to kill Holmgren, but that's a figure of speech. I didn't want to kill him. I just wanted to put him out of the game. Holmgren survived Tringali's tough guy tactics and got in a few shots of his own. Later, Tringali would become one of Holmgren's most ardent admirers. He was 6'5", he could throw like the wind. Tough, good, honest. He's, he's one of the people I'm really proud of. As a pro coach, Holmgren would hire one of Tringali's former players to be his offensive coordinator. Gil Haskell, St. Ignatius class of 1962. Vince ran the ball. He was a runner. He was an inside runner, and I am. I learned it here from him. That's something that I really learned from him was how to run the ball. In 2005, with Holmgren Haskell designing the plays, Seahawks running back Sean Alexander led the NFL in rushing and set an NFL record with 28 touchdowns. 20 touchdowns this season. His name goes into the NFL record books. Clearing the way for Alexander was a unit coached by another of Tringali's players. And the offensive linemen are shredding him right now. Offensive line coach Bill Laveroni. Come on, let's go. Go get him. Let's go get there. Let's go. I work at Seattle with Gil Haskell and Mike Holmgren. And I can't tell you how many nights, late at night, we would sit around the staff room, Gil and myself and Mike, and we talk about all the good times we had at St. Ignatius with Vince. To this day, as a coach, you know, coaching the offensive line at Seattle Seahawks, I talk about getting off the ball, how important that is. Vince is telling us about getting off the ball. If these guys could only have seen Vince getting the track pistol out, Vince is saying, I'm going to get that damn track pistol. I'm going to stick it right by your ass. If you don't get off the ball, and I, I told these guys the story, and they looked at me, and they said, who is this guy, coach? <laughs> In the fall of 1967, a junior named Dan Fouts transferred into St. Ignatius. I had a great team, but I needed a quarterback. Gift to the Magi. God, he was a big, strong, good quarterback he could throw. Problem was, I had a back. Every time I gave him the ball, he got 9 to 10 yards or a touchdown. And I think John McKay once said, when the ball's in the air, it belongs to anybody. When it's in your arm, it's yours. We ran the ball up. 
I got to give the kid credit. He never complained one time about not throwing the ball. He was a team player. When Fouts did throw, he showed flashes of his coming brilliance. As a junior, he led the Wildcats to their fourth city championship under Tringali. But as a senior, the future Hall of Fame quarterback was trumped in the playoffs by a future Hall of Fame receiver. And came second by an inch. A guy named Lynn Swan beat me. He caught a pass that ran through three guys for a touchdown, and that's what beat us. The 1968 season would be Tringali's swan song as coach at St. Ignatius. Though he stopped coaching, he has never stopped supporting his former players. That support can take you from your present day and maybe troubles that you're having and transport you back to a time when you were having fun and having success, being a part of a great experience. Whenever he calls, that's what happens to me. Phelps was the most famous player Tringali ever coached at SI. The most high-profile St. Ignatius student he didn't coach is longtime NFL assistant Al Saunders. Al Saunders is a, a little different case. Al was a, an Olympian swimmer, and his father wouldn't let him play football. When I had a meet and, and would set a, a record and come back and have Vince put his arm around me in the hallway, and he called me Fish, he said, hey, Fish, what a great job. Receiving his praise was just the top of the mountain to a young kid at St. Ignatius High School. My experience with Vince Tringali was in the early 60s. You know, at that time in, in our country, and there was all kinds of different strife. The drug culture and the free love experiences in San Francisco were at their highest. And, you know, there was a lot of different directions a lot of young kids could go. Vince Tringali stood for what was right in America to a lot of young high school students. When he left San Ignatius, he went to San Jose State and he went out for football. Vince was probably one of the main reasons that you know, I left the sport of swimming on a very high national level and, and went into football. I got more from Vince maybe than even a lot of students that, that ended up being around him as football players. You're one of mine as far as I'm concerned. Anybody can do what you did. No high school ball at all and make, make a San Jose State team at all league and become the head coach of the San Diego Chargers. Come on, I'll take it any time. That's one of my players, I don't care what you say. In 2002, Al Saunders' Chiefs and Gil Haskell's Seahawks went head-to-head -head in an offensive battle that would set an NFL record. And another first down. That's over the middle, caught first down. Chiefs. After the game, they had one person on their minds. They both called me up and said, we're going to send you something. We think you might like it. And this is the two of them after a game where they broke the uh, NFL record for first down for one game, 32 each, each team. The two St. Ignatius boys breaking an NFL record, and they sent this picture to the coach. I thought it was great. The salutation really makes me feel good, too, that they feel this way about me. Because that's all you get out of coaching is what, what's on there. What they say there means more than any championship I ever won. I think to a man, all of us who played for Vince owe him a, a debt of gratitude. He insisted that we be tough, and it lays a foundation for you at an early age. He was very instrumental in my, in my life and really helped me get to where I'm at today, and uh, I'll always love him for it. Vince, um, uh, I'm a coach today because of you, and thank you. What do you really get out of coaching? You get a relationship. You get a relationship with each boy that you coach. Some of the relationships are short. Some people you coach want more of you, and you give more. Some relationships are long. Some relationships are even until death. And even then, it doesn't stop. In victory, I salute you. I salute you and I thank you very much.